Okay, this week's sticker sponsor shout out is Vic Down Under Woodworks. Heaps of great woodworking videos. Also some good stuff on restoring a jointer and aligning the blades. Thanks mate, thanks for the sticker. G'day, so I knew absolutely nothing about jointers prior to making this video, so just go a little bit easy on my dickheadery. Enjoy. As you may know, I was gifted this jointer. It's, it's about 180 kilos, uh, 50 to 100 years old, no idea. It's a nine inch jointer, it's all cast iron. It is absolutely amazing. I started pulling it apart and realized, why don't I just make a quick video and show you guys how it gets restored. I love how it's been built. <laughs> Big chunky pieces with big bolts. They don't make stuff like that anymore. So this thing was made for me to pull apart because uh, I don't do mechanics, you know. Keep it simple, that's me. Alrighty, here we go. So originally the plan was just to pull off a few little bits and pieces, give it a bit of paint, clean it up, get it into action. Uh, but as you'll see, I'm gonna go deeper and deeper. I'm gonna learn as I go. Bear with me, um, it was a good fun project. This one sees pretty hard and it needs to lower before this one can come out of these grooves. So I'll just keep spraying WD-40 on. If I can get those both off, it'll probably make it nicer restore. Um, and I can then clean up underneath and everywhere else and lube it up nicely. Again, this thing is just unreal. So we'll see how we go with that. It's cool, it's cool stuff. So this is the outfeed side and although it turns a little bit it is quite jammed so i suspect that the as well as them being quite firm um this is pretty gunked up because this side probably rarely moved um but i'm gonna keep trying because it's bloody fun i tell you hang on a minute i've just found i can loosen this one off so we'll then see if that bed slides out rearward makes more sense doesn't it like i said i haven't restored a joint before obviously <laughs> ah. hey maybe this thing's gonna come off as well and this is where i start to think is this gonna throw out the bed and this is where my keenness sort of stops um i'll have a bit of a look but i'm not confident but we'll see how we go again it's like this thing was made for me like i can't actually believe how easy all these nuts come undone yeah obviously it wasn't made for a socket set because you can't get a socket set in a lot of the spots anyway are we getting closer now what else is a bloody hidden oh bloody jesus Right, that's got to come off. So I'm pretty committed at this stage. It's it's uh, pretty much getting pulled apart completely, uh, which it's a little bit scary, but um, I've also decided to call in a mate who loves to play with this sort of stuff. So stay tuned. Now, just giving the bottom a quick bit of spray paint, I haven't done any fancy metalwork cleanup. It's it's just a frame. It just needs to look a bit nicer, and um, that's all I've done. That that uh, and I'm happy with that. All right, so gonna take this piece off. At this stage, it was just to have a look underneath, um, give it a bit of a clean up, and uh, but then again, it's it's all these pieces are gonna go and get a nice paint job. All right, so here are some of the pieces up close just to show you the condition they are in uh, they're pretty old they're not too badly rusted just surface but they're grubby um, but just to give you a quick idea before I show you uh, how they've been beautifully restored and painted okay I just want to take 30 seconds to say thank you to Carl he's a mate from work um, he likes restoring old rusty things and um, when he saw this he nearly pissed his pants so this these pieces are just unbelievable uh, we still don't know how old this thing is um, but I'm, I'm about to put it back together and hopefully I took enough footage to figure that out but like I said earlier this thing is made for me big nuts big bolts big pieces cheers Carl 
you are a legend. Oh, this is my favorite piece. Um, this is the heaviest piece, but this is, it's just beautifully made. I mean, for the age of it, again, it's a rip snorter. I tell you what though, when they made this 100 years ago, is they didn't think about the socket set, did they? So I can't access most of these bolts, so I'm just using a shifter, because I don't have the right spanner. Check out these little parts. He's even polished all this steel up beautifully. Even polished up the heads of the nuts. But then said they'll probably rust, so, you know, put a bit of grease on them. But geez, they look good, and I agree. So, quick story. How did I get gifted this jointer? Uh, well, it starts with, uh, I put out a YouTube video. I received a comment from a bloke named Peter. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know how to take his comment. I was actually a little bit put off because it was following on for some other similar comments and, you know, the deal. But anyway, I responded um, because you never know the context of how someone writes. We had a bit of a conversation. It was all good in the end. But anyway, a week later, I get a message from Peter. Hey, Mark, would you like this nine-inch jointer that I have? I'm not using it and you'll probably get some good use out of it. Holy shit. Thank you very much, Peter. <laughs> You're an absolute legend. Moral of the story, um, for all you YouTubers, Instagrammers, just uh, don't get your back up too quickly when responding to comments. You don't always know the situation or the content or the intent of the comment. There's obviously some, some pretty ordinary comments out there. Deal with those as required. But in this case, be a good bloke and you get a jointer. Easy as that. Awesome. Moving on, all right, now we all saw me pull this cutter head out of the jointer with the two beds attached, right? So now I've got no idea why this thing will not just slide back in. And this real-time footage goes for about five minutes and then I realized you just need to put it in from this side and it goes straight in because of that little grease nipple, dickhead. Moving on, let's finish putting this thing together. A um, couple of bolts under there, gets that cutter head put in. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that's the, what's it called? The big fence, that holds the big fence up. Again, a couple of bolts. I actually managed to uh, get a socket set on a lot of these nuts and bolts just to get them most of the way done up, and that was, that was pretty cool. Um, didn't have any footage physically putting the fence on, but that is it right there, fence. It's a beautiful thing, and it's another one of my favorite pieces. It's just this massive, heavy, cast iron piece of goodness. All right, so even back in the 20s, possibly the 10s, that's uh, last century, my millennial friends. They were thinking safety. Boom. There we go. So what I do have to find is, uh, I think they're a torsion spring. Um, looks like there was provision for something. So this swings back to stop me chopping my face off. The last and most important job, check square. Check square. Check square. Holy shit. It's square. So all I've pretty much done is put everything back into their exact spots. So I've not finally tuned or set it up to work yet, but I still cannot believe how dead eye straight this thing is. Um, proof's gonna be in the pudding when we start playing with some timber. Okay, like you'll see in Vic's video, he's made a quick jig, um, but I've done the basic concept. I've got some angled steel and there's the rare earth magnets hiding under there and one down the other end. And they are simply pulling these knives up. So I've got two of those set up so that this, um, this knife is aligned beautifully with the outfeed bed. Okay, quick update of change to this angle steel. The aluminium, um, the magnets wouldn't stick to that as strong as all the steel, so the magnets would keep jumping. Uh, this thick stuff is holding it perfectly so that that blade is now aligned much nicer. Oh, and here we go. We are into it. Now, this is 
I have done some test cuts on some crappy timber, um, but this is what it's all about for me. I'm not 100% sure it's perfectly set up yet, but it is getting the job done. It's beautiful. Alrighty, so job one, I thought I'd just try and square up this skateboard stuff. So all the curvy lines of the board throws the eye out, but it needs a few more runs just to square it off. But it's getting to the point where I can now chop this up on the table saw and start using it as usable timber. Oh yeah, have a look at that. All right, I'm just gonna take a couple of small blanks for this one, send them over to Dale at Dell Bassett Timbers and let him have a crack. I'm sure he'll make some pretty cool stuff out of this. Okay, last job, I've got an electrician to come in and put in this beefed up start stop. It's got some under slender crappinator uh, device in there that um, basically needs the herbs and spices to fire up this massive motor. All right, that's pretty much it. The jointer is operational and it's ready for me to start squaring up somewhere in timber. For now, that's just gonna be some skateboard blanks. Uh, but that's very much going to come into play for all the pallet wood stuff I do. That timber is never square. Um, producing my slabs, that's going to tidy up those processes and hopefully let me start making some even better furniture. And um, I think you'll agree that this is an amazing piece of machinery. I'm very grateful to have it. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that is awesome. And stick with me. Thanks very much.